Now we're going to discuss the NEET 2022 paper. Yes, again very easy questions, very direct questions in the anatomy. Now it's a repeat question only. Identify the structure in the given diagram. Now this is the image of the cartilage. From the option itself, we got a clue. Okay. Now, in the case of the hyaline cartilage or elastic cartilage, the chondrocytes are found in groups. This is the hyaline cartilage. Why I am saying the hyaline cartilage, the chondrocytes are found in groups. Now, in the matrix, we are not seeing anything. Matrix is shiny. Matrix is like the glass. Now, in the case of elastic fiber, again the chondrocytes, they are found in groups. And in the matrix, we are seeing the elastic fibers. Now, if you want to see the elastic fibers, we need some special strengths. Now, this is the fibrous cartilage. Now, in the fibrous cartilage, the chondrocytes, they are arranged in rows. We are seeing the chondrocytes arranged in rows. Okay. Now, between the chondrocytes, we see the collagen fibers. Okay. Now, these are the type 1 collagen fibers. Bundles and bundles of type 1 collagen fibers are seen. So, see the slide. So, this is the slide of our answer, our fibrous cartilage, option D is the answer. It's not elastic. It is not the articular and non-articular cartilages. So it's a fibrous cartilage. The chondrocytes are arranged in rows. This is one row, this is one row, and this is one row. Now between the chondrocytes, yes, we are seeing the bundles and bundles of collagen fibers. So the answer for this question is option D. See, the NEET exam, the histology questions will be very simple. Usually they won't give any question from histology in the NEET exam. If they are giving means, they will ask you only basic questions about the epithelium or about the cartilage. Recently, they are asking question about transitional epithelium, hyaline, elastic and the fibrous cartilage. 2020 NEET exam, they gave question about elastic cartilage. 2022, we got the question about the fibrous cartilage. Again, they are asking next 2023, I am saying, they will ask the question about hyaline cartilage or they will give the question about transitional epithelium. This is what they will give you. Okay. So, histology, they won't give difficult questions. They will give very easy questions only. Now, which of the following is most likely seen due to the rupture of the saccular aneurysms in the brain? Epidural hemorrhage, subdural hemorrhage, subarachnoid hemorrhage and the intracerebral hemorrhage. So, now, rupture of saccular aneurysms. Now, saccular aneurysms are the rounded berry-like outpouchings which is arising from the arterial bifurcation. The saccular aneurysms are most commonly occurring at the circle of villus. Now, where you see the arteries? The arteries in the circle of villus, they are present in the subarachnoid space. Okay. So, now the rupture of saccular aneurysm means the patient will have, yes, subarachnoid hemorrhage. Now, when the patient will have epidural hemorrhage, which is due to the, yes, rupture of middle meningeal artery. So, middle meningeal artery, yes, which in turn result in epidural hemorrhage and rupture of bridging veins, which in turn result in our subdural hemorrhage. Okay. So, epidural hemorrhage is the arterial hemorrhage and subdural hemorrhage is the venous hemorrhage. Now, in both these conditions, you will see the lucid interval. Now, lucid interval is most commonly seen in epidural hemorrhage greater than subdural hemorrhage. Okay. Right. So, now what is the answer for this question? Now, our answer for this question is option C. Now, rupture of saccular aneurysms in brain which in turn leads to subarachnoid hemorrhage. Now, next question. Now, see this question. Now, this question now was previously they were asking repeatedly in the AIMS and INACET 2019, 2020, 2021. Yes, we got this question in the, yes, our AIMS and INACET exam. 2022, we got this question in the NEET exam. Now see the question, the patient has presented with unilateral retroorbital headache, photophobia, excessive tears. He also complains of hemifacial pain on clenching the teeth. On examination, the pupillary reaction is normal, light reflux and accommodation reflux were normal, which of the following structure is affected. So now the signs and symptoms were suggestive of the patient is having trigeminal neuralgia. So, trigeminal neuralgia, that is due to the compression of which nerve? Trigeminal nerve. So, they were asking you to identify the trigeminal nerve in the given diagram. Now, what is A? A is our optic nerve. This is the lesser wing of sphenoid. This is the optic canal. So, A is our optic nerve. Okay. Now, what is B? B is our oculomotor nerve, third nerve. Now, what is C? 
C is our trigeminal nerve. And what is D? D is this is the petrous temporal bone. Now in the petrous temporal bone, one foramen is there, our internal auditory meatus. I told you decently. No? So that is our facial nerve. So internal auditory meatus transmit seventh nerve and eighth nerve. So D is our our seventh nerve. Okay? Right. So now can you identify this nerve here? That is our sixth nerve. Very good. And this is our eighth nerve. And this is our this is our jugular foramen. So jugular foramen, this is the ninth nerve, this is tenth nerve, and this is eleventh nerve. And these are nothing but the hypoglossal nerve, twelfth nerve. Again they will ask you. 2023 INACT or 2022 November INACT, they will give question from this image. Okay, very often we are getting this question. Again, they will ask you, don't worry. Now, what is the answer for this question? It identify the trigeminal nerve. Now, what is the trigeminal nerve? C is the answer for this question. Now, see this question. Now, which are the following ligament develop in the arrow of the marked structure? Option A, falciform ligament. B, gastrophrenic ligament. C, gastrosplenic ligament. D, linoid ligament. So, they were asking the derivatives of, yes, ventral and dorsal mesogastrium. This is the ventral mesogastrium and this is the dorsal mesogastrium. Now, in the ventral mesogastrium, yes, see the diagram here. Now, the stomach is connected to anterior abdominal wall by means of ventral mesogastrium. This is the ventral mesogastrium. The stomach is connected to the posterior abdominal wall by means of dorsal mesogastrium. Now, in the ventral mesogastrium, liver is formed. In the dorsal mesogastrium, spleen is formed. Now, what are the ligaments derived from the ventral mesogastrium from stomach to liver? We have a ligament. What is that? Our lesser omentum. It is coming from ventral mesogastrium. Okay. And yes, now from the liver to anterior abdominal wall, our falciform ligament. Now, the falciform ligament, which in turn gives two more ligament. What are those? Our coronary ligament and triangular ligament. The mnemonic is lesser fact. Mnemonic is lesser fact. Okay. These are structures derived from ventral mesogastrium. Now, in the dorsal mesogastrium, see here, I told you spleen is formed. From stomach to spleen, gastrosplenic ligament. From spleen to kidney, left kidney, lino-renal ligament. And the dorsal mesogastrium also forms greater momentum. Greater momentum derived from dorsal mesogastrium 2018 neat question. The same question they modified into image based question and they asked the ventral mesogastrium. Ventral mesogastrium forms lesser momentum and the falciform ligament. Okay. Right. See the question. The marking is on the ventral mesogastrium. Ventral mesogastrium forms falciform ligament and lesser momentum. Gastrophrenic, gastrosplenic, lenorenal, they are all coming from dorsal mesogastrium. And answer for this question is option A. Now see the next question. Now next question is 32 year old male patient with a history of motor vehicle accident has presented to the casualty with a pelvic fracture. His vitals are stable. He is unable to pass the urine. On examination, he has blood at the penile meatus. And GU has been performed as shown below. What is the most likely the site of urethral injury? So, they were asking about the rupture of urethra. Now, we have to note one important clue. Pelvic fracture. Again, this question not a new question. Very old question. Recently, they gave this question in FMG exam. 2021 FMG exam. We got this question. That is why I am saying, yes, if you are appearing for NEET INACT exam, try to know the answer, the questions of the recent FMG paper also. If you are appearing for the FMG exam, try to know the recent INACT and the NEET paper. You will get some repeats. Now, the recent question they gave in the FMG exam. Now, patient is having pelvic fracture. That is the clue. Now, in the case of pelvic fracture, the, yes, a patient is having pelvic fracture. Pelvic fracture means then the patient will have the membranous urethra rupture. So, membranous urethra rupture, it is seen in our pelvic fractures. That is very, very important clue. Now, when the patient will have the spongy urethral rupture, the spongy urethral rupture, it is seen in spongy urethral rupture it is seen in straddle injuries see here he is having straddle injuries so in these straddle injuries the patient will have the spongy urethral rupture 
Now see this diagram. Yes. Now in this diagram, you are seeing the different parts of the urethra. This is the prostatic urethra, and below that, this is the membranous urethra, and this entire thing is the spongy urethra. Now spongy urethra, this is number one, and this is number two. Number one, that is the bulb of penis. In that, the spongy urethra is passing. That is called bulbous urethra or bulbar urethra. Number two, the urethra is passing over the shaft of the penis. That is called penile urethra. So spongy urethra, we have two parts: bulbous part and the penile part. So now, in the case of straddle injury, the patient will have the rupture of bulbar urethra. Okay. Now, in the case of rupture of bulbar urethra with the rupture of buccospecia, then the urine will extravasate to, to number one, our superficial perineal pouch because root of penis or bulb of penis is present in the superficial perineal pouch now number 2 the urine will come to scrotum number 3 the urine will go to penis number 4 the urine will go to anterior abdominal wall so the superficial perineal pouch in the front side it is communicating with anterior abdominal wall so in the case of the bulba urethra rupture the urine will go to four areas but now see the question now in the question they gave clearly the patient is having pelvic fracture pelvic fracture na spongy urethra it is not ruptured spongy urethra bulba urethra penile urethra the part of the spongy urethra only now what is the answer i told you in the case of pelvic fracture membranous urethra is ruptured now see the diagram here now this is the yes spinal urethra and this is the membranous urethra and you are seeing the extra vestigial of the fluid here yes the patient is having the membranous urethra rupture that is the answer for this question so pelvic fracture means the patient will have the rupture of membranous urethra okay now see the next question the patient undergone varicose surgery presents with loss of sensation in the medial aspect of the leg now which of the following nerve injured the same question we got in 2021 neat exam the same question again they repeated in 2022 neat exam so the loss of sensation in the medial aspect of the leg that is due to the involvement of which nerve yes saphenous nerve see here now already we know the nerve supply in the ncct paper no we discussed the nerve supply of the thigh now we going to see the the nerve supply of the leg cutaneous innervation of the leg the medial aspect of the leg is supplied by saphenous nerve and the lateral aspect of the leg is supplied by our lateral sural cutaneous nerve it's a branch of common peroneal nerve and the entire dorsum is supplied by the superficial peroneal nerve except the first web space the first web space is supplied by our deep peroneal nerve or deep fibular nerve and the sural nerve will supply the lateral aspect of the dorsum so entire dorsum is by superficial peroneal nerve except two areas the first web space that is supplied by our deep peroneal nerve and the lateral most aspect in the dorsum is by sural nerve okay so now what is the answer for this question i told you our saphenous nerve that is supplying the medial aspect of the leg saphenous nerve it is a branch of femoral nerve okay the saphenous nerve that is the longest cutaneous nerve in the body okay right and it supplies up to the it supplies up to the ball of the great toe up to the ball of great toe supplying the medial aspect of the leg and up to the ball of great toe that is the answer for this question saphenous nerve medial aspect of the leg sensory supply so one last question in the neat exam now in this diagram yes we are seeing the neuromuscular blockade monitoring through rectus pollicis muscle now which of the following nerve is tested here now they are asking directly the nerve supply of rectus pollicis muscle now all the muscles in the palm are supplied by our deep branch of ulnar nerve except loaf muscle l o a f muscle now this loaf muscles are supplied by our median nerve so median nerve supplies these muscles now what is l l means lumbricals lumbricals 1 and lumbricals 2 now what is o opponens pollicis muscle what is a abductor pollicis brevis muscle what is f flexor pollicis brevis muscle o a f now this o a f muscle will form the thenar eminence 
Now, whenever they want to ask any question about middle nerve injury, they will give this clue only. The patient is having TNR eminence atrophy, which means that they are asking question about middle nerve. Now, important point is erector pollicis muscle. Now, erector pollicis muscle, you may think that it is the muscle of TNR eminence. No, TNR eminence muscle means the eminence over the thumb. This is TNR eminence. Our erector pollicis muscle is not present here. The erector pollicis muscle is present here. Okay, there is not a thinner eminence muscle. So, erector pollicis muscle, it is not supplied by our median nerve that is supplied by ulnar nerve. So, ulnar nerve supplies all the muscles in the palm except loaf muscle. So, what are the muscles supplied by ulnar nerve? The ulnar nerve supplies all the muscles in the palm except loaf muscles. Lumbricals 3, lumbricals 4 supplied by D branch of ulnar nerve. 4 palmar interosseous supplied by our D branch of ulnar nerve. 4 dorsal interosseous supplied by D branch of ulnar nerve. Erector pollicis supplied by D branch of ulnar nerve. And these muscles, opponents digiti minimi, flexor digiti minimi, abductor digiti minimi, these muscles, they will form the hypothenar eminence. Okay, so hypothenar eminence muscles supplied by our D branch of ulnar nerve. So whenever they want to ask any question about ulnar nerve, they will give you this clue. Hypothenar eminence atrophy that is due to the involvement of ulnar nerve. Okay, so please remember, go by the mnemonic, loaf muscles supplied by median nerve. Remaining all muscles are supplied by our D branch of ulnar nerve. So now erector pollicis is supplied by our ulnar nerve. That is the answer for this question. Okay. Right, so that's all guys. These are the questions we got in the recent NEET exam. So the NEET paper, very easy. So the point is, you'll get the question from the high yield area only. They won't give the direct questions. The questions will be from the same topic, but they will change the options and they will change, they will modify the questions. From the same area you'll get, but you won't get the same question. If you get the same question means, then you are so lucky. Okay, so yes. So try to focus on the important areas. Definitely you will answer the question. Okay. So thank you so much for joining this session and wish you good luck and see you in the next session. Thank you so much.